So we've already had our robot drive straight, and we've also had our robot drive straight for a short length of time. But what about turning? Now, in one of my earlier videos, I did accidentally make my robot turn. But let's instead have my robot turn on purpose. So I'm just going to launch IntelliJ. So create new project. And we'll just hit next. And we'll go ahead and create a project from a template. We'll use the Hello World template. And let's give this a name. We'll call it turn, or actually, let's call it do a turn. And I don't really like that the capital A is right next to the capital T, so I guess I'll go ahead and use snake case. And that's where you have things separated by underscores. And I probably should have made those capital letters lowercase to match snake case better, but eh, whatever, it doesn't matter. So I'm going to go in and I'm first going to get rid of the hello world. I'm going to instead change that to something more related to turning. Like expressing its intent to turn. And let's add a comment in here. Just so we can sort of identify what the program is, what it's supposed to do, who it's by, those sorts of things. So the robot will go, turn, and come back. That sounds decent to me. And now let's give it some actual text. And the last line, who the program is by, and let's put the date on there. And we'll add our import commands to import the Leos custom libraries. So Leos.nxt motor and Leos.nxt button. Gonna add a few more print line commands. Essentially, the one to basically express that it is waiting for me to press the start button. Because I always like to start mine with that, so that way when I run it, it doesn't drive right off the table. That saves me a minute or two of time. Well, it saves me a few seconds of time, so I don't have to navigate through the file system to find the file. Whether or not you choose to do it this way is up to you, but it's how I like to do it. And now we tell motor A to go forward. And let's go ahead and tell motor B to go forward. And then after a couple of seconds, we'll tell it to turn. Which means that we'll have to use the sleep using the try and catch blocks. So thread dot sleep. And then parentheses, how many milliseconds? So that should go for about five seconds. And then of course we have to do the catch. And inside the parentheses, we just put the interrupted exception E. And then we need what it's actually going to do if it is interrupted. And we're just going to do a print line for that, just to state that it got interrupted. So that way we are aware if that were to happen. With our program being so simple, it won't. But we still have to put that in there anyways. Well, some sort of catch block. And now that we have that, now we can give it the next set of the motor commands. So motor A will continue going forward, but instead motor B will stop. And so if one motor is going and the other one is stopped, then it will turn. Now this particular type of turn is a swing turn because it is going to sort of swing around that motor B. Since that one will remain stationary and the other one continues moving, it's going to sort of swing the active side of the robot around that spot. And I'm just going to add another print line command. Actually, maybe I should make my English a little better. Like, I'll do a turn and come back. I think it supports ampersands on the NXT. I guess we'll find out. Let's make the turn a little bit shorter. Now I am estimating, I don't know exactly how long it needs to have a 180 degree turn. And there's not really a magic number for that. 
it's going to depend on the build of your robot and how far apart the tires are from each other. We'll add another thread sleep in here since it's going back the way it came. It's going to be the exact same amount as that first one. And then we'll tell the motors to stop. And we'll just grab another print command and another wait for button press just so that way it will tell me when it's done and it will actually give me time to look and see that it's done. And so we can save this and I can go and find it in my finder and I can use the terminal to transfer it to my robot.